Front Office Insights heads to Minnesota. We look at the Twins. Now, last year, the Twins finished third in the AL Central. They had 78 wins. Uh, so, they, you know, this is, this is a close to a 500 team. They're, they had a run differential of plus 12. So, you know, right there on the cusp. Uh, Jim, when we look at the Minnesota Twins in their off season with things that they did, did they make themselves better? Are they going to contend in this central division? Yeah, I think they're going to contend, Howard. I mean, look, the way I have it lined up is Guardians, White Sox, Twins, one, two, three. But I think all three teams have a shot to win the division. All three teams are going to have a shot at the wild card. I, I really believe that. Um, but I've got them ranked three. Look, the fact that they were able to retain Carlos Correa was a miracle. He, first, he agreed to a deal with the Giants, and then the medicals nixed it. Then he agreed to the Mets, and the same doctor that nixed the Giants deal nixed the Mets deal. And then Minnesota was sitting there. He fell on his lap at six years, 200. That was, that was an incredible job by Thad Levine and, and Derek Falvey to be able to retain him. So that was their big move. I love their signing of catcher Christian Vasquez to a three-year, $30 million deal. $10 million a year for one of the game's best game callers. Frames pitches extremely well. Can stop the running game. Uh, really like that pickup. They took a chance on Joey Gallo, one year, eleven million. Look, get Gallo out of New York, get him out of L.A., the big market. Put him in the small market of Minnesota. Let him watch Mary Tyler Moore reruns. And you know what? He, no shift anymore. No shift. Right? Yeah. I mean, so you know, maybe he hits two twenty this year and hits forty home runs or thirty five home runs. It's realistic. So I like that signing. Uh, they made a, a couple of trades. The most important one to know is the, the most important one to know is getting Pablo Lopez from Miami for the batting champion Lewis Arise. They needed to get another starter, so that was their biggest move. The only other trade that I'll mention that I think is worth mentioning is is they traded uh, a deal for the Royals to pick up Michael A. Taylor to give them another center fielder besides Buxton, so the Buxton can DH some, can rest some, so they can try to keep him healthy longer than they have during his career. Uh, which may be more significant for Buxton than it is Taylor. I don't, you know, I don't think I have any fantasy interest in Taylor. I, I really don't, even though he's got speed and power. But I think maybe getting Buxton off his legs more often gives them a better chance of him being more productive. Maybe. But that was basically their offseason. Does Jim Bowden go back to Byron Buxton this season? Film at 11, people. Let's go around the diamond here. Let's talk about who you like for fantasy purposes. Vasquez behind the plate. Uh, Jose Miranda is going to probably start off as their first baseman because of his shoulder issues, um, which kind of leaves a little bit of a hole at third base when you got Donovan Solano, maybe Kyle Farmer uh, for the time being. Also, Alex Kirilov can handle first base as well, but he's banged up. Jorge Polanco at second. Uh, Carlos Correa at short in the outfield. Gallo, Buxton, Max Kepler. They also have Trevor Larnack is a uh, is a possible depth guy. Nick Gordon is a possible depth guy. Fantasy purposes, Jim. What hitters do you target? Okay, so well, first of all, I like Carlos Correa, but you got to keep in mind with Correa, and I think this is extremely important. Um, you need to keep in mind that he is a much better reality player than fantasy player because he doesn't steal bases. He's not going to hit 30 homers. He's going to hit 25. And, you know, what he brings to a clubhouse and defensively doesn't show up in most fantasy leagues. Um, but he's solid. So, you know, if you don't get any of the top shortstops, I, you know, I would take him. You know, I think 280, 20 homers, 80 RBIs, score 80 runs. I mean, there's some value in that. So I like him. Um, I, I do want to talk about Jose Miranda for a minute because he's a very fascinating guy. I like his bat. And I know in my conversations with Rocco Baldelli, including one I had last week with him or exchanged texts with him, I know how high he is on Miranda as well. I wrote an article on The Athletic about him um, last week. Um, I always like the swing. Now, the stat cast and the, and the analytic people don't like him as much as I do. Um, but I, I've watched hitters my whole life and been pretty accurate over the years. And I think he's, I think he's got upside that people don't talk about. So I like Miranda. Um, I loved Alex Kirilov two years ago. Now he's had the wrist surgery and I haven't seen him personally this spring outside of on television. I'm told by Derek Falvey, the chief baseball officer that he's fine and good to go. Um, but again, I'm always one that I need to see it first. And a guy that has, a wrist surgery. I've seen too many guys. It, it takes a while to come back. And sometimes it's the second year when they come back that you end up performing. 
So I'm not going to take the gamble, but I'll watch him. I think he'll be available on the waiver wire or in trades if all of a sudden he comes out. So that's the infield. In the outfield, you know, I mean, Byron Buxton never plays. He just never plays. He's a human injured list. But if he does play, we all know what he can be. He can be a beast in fantasy. Gallo if you need home runs, but he's going to drag you down if you're in a, in a points league with strikeouts count against you. He's going to drag you down in batting average. So, you know, in reality, I like the three-run homer hitting seventh, but in fantasy, I really don't like it because it's a one-tool guy for me, and that's the home runs. So I, I guess position player-wise, that's it. Um, not as many as you would think. Reality players, I, I like it more. I, th- I think they'll win more than they lose. I think it's an 83-85 to 85 win team. I do. Fantasy, it's just outside of Buxton and taking a chance on Miranda and settling on Correa. That's about it, really, for me, position player-wise. All right. Well, let's go to the dime, to the mound then, and let's uh, Sonny Gray, Joe Ryan, Pablo Lopez, Tyler Molly, Kent Maeda. That looks like the top five. And then you've got uh, Bailey Ober, Josh Winder, Chris Paddock. Well, ba- Paddock and Winder are both hurt. Um, do you like any of these guys? Yeah, so they're all third starters in Major League Baseball. Like, none of them are ones or twos. If I had to pick one, I'm taking Joe Ryan of the group. Um, I, I just, you know, I just, you know, I, I, maybe he's top top 60 on pitchers, maybe. Top 70, somewhere along those lines. After that, my next guy that I like is Pablo Lopez, who throws strikes, and, you know, I, I like... The ERA. So those are the two guys that I would take. But in fan, if, if they're number three starters in reality, they're six starters for me in fantasy, right? Okay. I, I need more upside than that. But they're solid. Don't get me wrong. And if you have injuries, yeah, I would go with one. I think they'll be okay. I think they'll give you some bulk, which matters. Um, but in terms of the rotation, for me, it's yeah, it's it's, it's those two guys. Now. You and I spoke to Derek Falvey uh, on the GM's corner when I subbed in uh, that day. Um, And then you also spoke to Thad Levine, uh, um, I I guess like a week or so prior to that. Um, And we got conflicting reports here as far as their closer. Yohan Duran, Jorge Lopez. Um, Have you gotten any more clarity to that situation? Or is this just, you know what, handcuff them and go with that? I mean, I personally, if you want to know my recommendation, it's going to be to handcuff them. I I will say that, you know, the information that you and I were given is different. Okay. So I had, we had, and we, I talked to, or text with all three, Derek Falvey and Thad Levine and Rocco Baldelli. And we got different answers. You know, we've got Jorge Lopez for one. Committee by another and Duran by the other. I'm going to go with the following opinion starting the year. I think it's going to be Lopez initially getting the saves and they'll use Duran in the high leverage spots of the lineup. So if you're facing the Astros and you're going against their two, three, four hitters in the seventh inning, I think Duran's going to pitch there. If they're going to go with the two, three, four hitters in the ninth, then I think Duran's going to close. So I think they're going to share the saves. That would be my guess. I I, I would say it's going to be, uh, if I had to guess, seven to five. <laughs> for every seven saves for Lopez, Duran's going to get five. That That's just a guess. But that's where I'm at. If someone asked me who's going to get the most saves before the All-Star game, I would go Lopez. Let's get to the prospects. Uh, I know Royce Lewis is a guy that we uh, that we've shown some interest in. Uh, Austin Martin was a high draft pick, but he ends up uh, he's he's banged up again. Um, what do you think on the uh, on the horizon here for the Twins? Yeah, two guys you need to know. You need to know Brooks Lee. If you don't know who Brooks Lee is, then you don't know their farm system. He's their best prospect. He's not even close. First round pick last year. He fell to them at the eighth selection overall, and he should never have fallen that far. That's the next star in Minnesota. That's the guy. Uh, when Lee is ready, Correa will be playing third base for Minnesota, and Miranda will be at first. That, that's how it's going to play out. Um, when does Lee get there? Uh, a couple of years. I mean, it won't be this year. Maybe the end of next year. I mean, they, they go pretty quick these days. It's not like the olden days. He's their best prospect. If you Grab him in Dynasty if you can. Right now. Right here. Right now. 
Um, if Royce Lewis is healthy, as you talked about, I mean, look, he, he could help out in the infield, the outfield. He's, he's certainly one to watch. Uh, I, I asked Derek Falvey about Edward Julian because that's the guy everybody's talking about when I talk to scouts. Uh, he's, he's a young second base. They really like him. They think he's really going to hit, and they like him a lot. So Julian, uh, after Brooksley, is, is a guy to, to think about. They also have an outfield named Emmanuel Rodriguez that they talk about um, quite a bit as well. But again, uh, Brooksley and Julian are the two guys, um, both middle infielders, that you need to know about with the Twins. All right. Well, let's wrap up our Twins coverage here, Jim, with uh, one sleeper and one bust. Who do you got? My sleeper is Jose Miranda. I think he's going to be a guy. I think he's going to hit. I think he's going to hit for power and hit for average. I like him. Uh, and I'm going to go with the bust, Byron Buxton again. Going to bust us again. He always busts us. Why do we think he's going to play when he's never played? Like, no. I know. I asked you that question last year. I know. And I and what did I tell you? I said he's finally going to play 140 games. And I was wrong. And he didn't. So I'm not going to make the mistake again. <laughs> you can, you, 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 look, I'll make a mistake once. I don't make the same mistake twice. Bust. Oh. Bust it is. All right. Well, there you go, folks. In a nutshell, the Minnesota Twins for fantasy purposes. As always, we thank you for checking out our front office insights. You can find all of our team previews on the SXM app. So search Fantasy Alarm. You can also find them in the MLB Draft Guide over at FantasyAlarm.com. When we come back, more news, more notes, maybe your phone calls, 888-963-2682. It's Howard Bender, it's Jim Bowden, it's Fantasy Alarm on Sirius XM, Fantasy Sports Radio.